Hello everyone, today I'll be going through how to install SQL Server 2008 R2. Now before we can do this install, .NET Framework 3.5 SP1 must be installed on your machine. I've already went through and installed that piece, so we can go ahead and run setup. Now I'll be installing the Developer Edition since I'm on Windows 7. The Standard and Enterprise Editions of SQL Server, those can only be installed on a server operating system. So it's going to bring out this SQL Server Installation Center. We want to go to Installation and select the first option, New Installation. Make sure that your setup support rules pass and that you don't have any errors. Click OK. Now there's some prerequisite support files that needs to be installed before SQL Server can actually be able to begin the installation. So we want to go ahead and install those. So make sure that in the setup support rules that you also get no errors here. Click next. And here we enter in our product key if we have one. Uh, if you don't, you can select the evaluation version if you're just running this on a test machine. Accept the license terms. Click next. And we want to select the first option, SQL Server Feature Installation. On the feature selection, here is where we actually select what we want to install. The main component is your database engine that you should select that's your actual SQL Server. As well as the management tools, this will help you manage your SQL Server. Uh, there are some other options that I like to install, like the full text search. Uh, these options you don't necessarily have to install yourself. Uh, one other feature that I would recommend you install is the books online. This is a great documentation where I go to whenever I have syntax issues or any other kind of uh, SQL Server questions that I may have. This is usually the first place that I go to. Once you have your feature selected, click Next. And make sure you have no failures in your installation rule check. In the instance configuration, for SQL Server instances, you have two options, either the default instance or the name instance. On, per, on each machine, you can only have one default instance, but you could have multiple name instances. Since this is the first time we're installing SQL Server on this machine, both options are available to us. I'm going to just go ahead and leave it as the default instance and click Next. this base requirements check, click next. Now here is where you specify what account you want to use to run your SQL Server services. Since this is just my test machine, I'm going to go ahead and choose system. However, if you're installing this on a server, and especially if this is a production environment, best practices is to have a AD account created for each of the services and run under that AD account, that domain account. So click next and we have two choices for authentication mode, the Windows authentication and the mixed mode. With Windows authentication it's going to pass through your Windows account um, and it's going to grab that account from your Windows domain and your, or your local system. For mixed mode, it's a combination of the Windows authentication as well as you have the ability to create users in SQL Server. 
Now I'm going to choose mixed mode since it gives me the option for either and put in my password for the SA account. And the SA account, this is a SQL account that has system administrator per permissions to your SQL server. And I'm going to go ahead and add myself as a sysadmin. On the other tabs on top, you could specify where you want your uh, database files and log files to go, as well as your, your temporary MDF and temporary LDF files, and also your uh, default backup directory. I'm just going to leave this as the default and click next. Click next. Make sure that the installation configuration rules pass. And now it's ready to install. We can click next and install. Now this installation usually takes uh, approximately 10 to maybe 20 minutes so I'm going to pause the video and resume once that is completed okay the installation completed successfully we could close this out we could also close out the installation center we won't need this anymore and to check on our server we could go to start all programs Microsoft SQL Server 2008 R2 and open up SQL Server Management Studio and connect to your server. Now the server name is going to be the name of your machine. So for my machine it's this connect and we see that we could connect successfully and right now there's currently no user databases. We do have some system databases but here we verify that the SQL installation did complete successfully and we can connect.